Napoleon Bonaparte once made a statement, there is something special about Jesus. There's something special about Jesus, and, uh, well, he gave us some extraordinary teachings that we should turn the other cheek, that we, if we want other people to be nice to us, we should be nice to them, and uh, other such fine teachings of Jesus. He said there's something special about Jesus, and then he went on to say that when you consider people who are empire builders in the world, in the history of the world, when you consider Alexander when you consider Caesar, when you consider Charlemagne, or if you consider me, Napoleon, we all founded empires and we did it by force. But Jesus Christ founded an empire and he never used force. He only used love. And he said, even right now, millions of men would die for Jesus Christ because of his love. Now today I'm going to read a section of the Word of God. It's taken from the fourth chapter of the Gospel of John. We're going to be looking at verses 39 to 42. It is the story of the Samaritan woman and the aftermath of her witnessing. I'm Pastor Richard Krause coming to you from Christ Lutheran Church in Pewaukee, Wisconsin. We also have satellites in the town of Aaron, up close to Holy Hill, and in Wauwatosa as well. This is what we read in this section from John chapter 4. Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them, and he stayed two days. And because of his words, many more became believers. They said to the woman, We no longer believe just because of what you said, but now we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this man really is the Savior of the world. There's something special about Jesus. Did you ever think about that in another context? There's something special about Jesus. Sometimes we might have a neighbor, for instance, who puts up a statue of Buddha in the backyard. During the Christmas celebration, there are people who are uh, doing all sorts of absurd things to celebrate Satan or who knows what. And those things, to some degree, uh, we're told we need to accept because we have freedom of religion. But of course, there's a double standard that's becoming more and more apparent out there. If you put up a cross, well, that's offensive. If you put up a statue of Jesus Christ, tear it down. That's a bias for Christianity. You know, there is something to be said about this. Now, the Samaritan woman, uh, she talked to people back in her village where she came from. She confessed her sins, and she came to know Jesus Christ as the Savior. And Jesus spends a couple of days there in Samaria, and many people come to believe. They come to believe in the message of eternal life. They make the confession, as it's stated here in verse 42, we know that this man really is the savior of the world. He's not just a person who teaches. He's a person who saves us, saves us from eternal death. He forgives us our sins. His message is not like all these other world religions. And maybe that's one of the reasons that Christianity is so offensive. All these other messages pale in comparison to the message that Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world. They made that confession. They didn't know anything about Jesus a couple days before, but now they came to believe in him. Well, sometimes I think we don't treasure Jesus enough. Sometimes people say they've studied all these other world religions or whatever they might say. I took a philosophy class at the university and we covered all these different things. Oh, really? 
Oh, really? Jesus is the Savior of the world. He is the one who said, I'm going to die and I'm going to rise again. And he did exactly that. Jesus is not molding away in some grave back in Israel someplace. No, <laughs> he's alive and well. He is the Savior of the world.